Hey everybody, how are you guys doing today? My name is Nick, otherwise known here as Valence. Welcome to some Halo 5 Guardians, and today I just wanted to showcase some gameplay to you guys while talking about my thoughts and opinions on the beta. I was not expecting to get into this beta, and I found out that I did via the Xbox One preview program. Uh, come Friday, I got an email in my inbox, which reminded me, I guess, why I'm in the Xbox One preview program. <laughs> so, I honestly, there's not a lot of benefits I've had to being part of the Xbox One preview program outside of testing a couple new dashboard features uh, all of which you know now don't really matter too much because uh, they don't give us really anything exclusive but this was a cool reward so hopefully they keep doing stuff like this in the future for preview program members getting us early access to a lot of the games they're doing and showcasing multiplayer demos and things to us uh, so yeah Halo 5 Guardians I was pleasantly surprised uh, now this is coming from a guy who oh, I'm not a very hardcore Halo player I want to go ahead and say that and when I say hardcore I mean I didn't play competitively, right? I didn't really get into the competitive side of Halo until very recently, actually, when I was offered a part-time position at Arena Gaming. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I actually was one of the two broadcasters on Arena Gaming for their last few tournaments before they uh, ended up kind of going under. But uh, I ran the live stream there and got really into competitive Halo. I helped run some of the brackets, but mainly what I was doing is swapping between cameras and learning the different parts of the game. So, with competitive Halo, I got extremely involved and interested at the tail end of Halo 4. Now, that being said, I didn't really enjoy Halo 4 because Halo 4 felt like it was 343 just trying to blatantly copy what Bungie had done in the past and add a couple things that may or may not make it their own, like sprinting, for example. But, you know, the one thing about Halo Halo 4 that I really did not enjoy was just how a lot of that was represented. So when it comes down to it, I really, really appreciate Halo 5 because it tries to be its own thing while remaining truly competitive Halo to me. Now, you know, what basically stood out here is that it's Halo. It's not something different where 343's tried to alter it in order to, you know, appease a modern crowd. But, I will say that that has been done as far as the pace of Halo goes. So, one thing about Halo 5 Guardians is it's extremely fast. It is built fast, it is built to move fast, and you're constantly going to be moving around the map and trying to control various positions. You know, a lot of these things, though, I feel don't bother me too much because the traditional Halo things are in there. You've got descoping. Your shields don't regenerate while sprinting. Power weapons must be controlled because if they're not controlled, you're going to lose. And various things around those lines. No custom class I think is another huge one, right? And I want to talk about all these things in detail, but first of all, I just want to chat about the movement. The movement in Halo 5 feels great, and there's a lot of little tiny balance changes that have made the movement feel good. In Halo 4, you know, you could sprint pretty much all the time, but now you have indefinite sprinting, which is something that I actually really enjoyed, because you're a Spartan. You're in a giant, giant suit. You're supposed to be a super soldier. The fact that you can't sprint consistently is something that bothered me. Now, you do have consistent sprinting in here, but they balance the consistent sprinting by adding, and I love this, whenever you're sprinting, you cannot regenerate your shield. Fantastic change. So by giving, by sprinting, right, when you're, you know, in danger, so to speak, you are sacrificing that shield regen. You have to do the basic movement in order to have your shield regenerate. That's something that's very welcome. It's a balancing act. Uh, two other things that they've added, too, are the suit powers. They both really showed these off during the gameplay trailer uh, for the Halo 4, or excuse me, Halo 5 multiplayer beta, which is coming in late December for everybody, right, the Boston Master Chief Collection. Um, one of these is the sprint charge. Uh, so when you're sprinting, after a couple seconds, you charge up a melee strike that if you push down your melee button, you will shoulder charge your enemy in a little third person view. Uh, I'm very pleased to announce that that is not very useful. Uh, most of the time when I went ahead and tried the shoulder charge functionality out, I actually ended up getting myself killed. And the base premise here is that anybody who's a competent Halo player can kill you before you can shoulder charge somebody. Um, with the assault rifle, with anything of that nature, I mean, any weapon can pretty much take you out before you can execute a shoulder charge, unless you do it from behind. So it's very situational, and honestly, it's not the best thing in the world. 
Uh, same with the ground pound. So the ground pound is something you can use when you're in the air. You can hold down your melee button to charge up a ground pound, or excuse me, your crouch button to charge up a ground pound. Um, I always go ahead and I swap it to fish stick because I'm a Call of Duty player at heart when it came down to that control scheme. So now that I'm getting back into Halo, I'm doing it that way. Although the base Halo 5 Guardians control scheme felt a lot like Destiny in a way, based on the melee button being on the right shoulder bumper. But, you know, it, it felt good both ways. I've played both ways. I'm used to both ways at this point in time. Um, but the ground pound, you know, it's a five second charge up if you want to execute a full ground pound. Three second if you just want to execute a base. But again, in that point in time, it's only useful if you're coming up behind an opponent or you have the drop on your opponent. Because any competent Halo player can kill you in the time it takes you to do the ground pound. Uh, now that aside, there's a couple other functionalities in here that are great. Uh, you now also have the quick dodge boost, which is similar to the uh, jet, or the, excuse me, the I believe it was the jump pack that you had in Halo 4. We could dodge left or right or forward or backward really quick. It's built into the game now on all Spartans. I used it consistently, and basically it's just a method of escape whenever you're trying to dodge around a corner or move around something. Again, very welcome change, and I found myself consistently using this to get out of bad situations. It's something that works really well with Halo. It feels new even though I know it's been in previous games. And it functions similarly if you guys want a in-game comparison to the Call of Duty Advanced Warfare left and right. Now, I do feel like Halo had it before Call of Duty did, uh, just based on the fact that I know some people working at Halo, and I know they've been working on Halo 5 Guardians for quite some time to make it 343's own little pet project. So, you know, there's that. Uh, on top of that, I also want to go ahead and point out that uh, there are no custom classes in here, at least so far as I uh, played in this beta. So it did have different starting setups. It said the starting setup from my playlist, which was Slayer only throughout the period of this early access beta, was only uh, available as a Magnum and then an Assault Rifle start. Uh, now you've also got the scoping down with all weapons now. Uh, this is actually extremely welcome, especially with the Assault Rifle, because what it does is it makes the Assault Rifle not so useful. Now longer range, you know, you're still going to be able to uh, get owned by a Battle Rifle or a DMR or a Sniper Rifle or anything of, those, uh, anything of that nature, rather, because the assault rifle is a close range weapon, but the scoping allows the assault rifle to compete with various other guns like the battle rifle because it gives you a small window where you can aim down sights and focus your fire a little bit more. Now, descoping is in there, so if someone else is spraying you with an assault rifle, again, it'll descope you and it's going to go back to your traditional halo. I really appreciated these scope features and how it was added to every gun with uh, the zoom in via your visor because all it serves to do is make weapons that you would typically just drop at the beginning of the game more viable when you're trying to get involved with how things work so all in all not bad i really really like the new scoping feature magnums as powerful as i would like the sniper's great i was constantly using the sniper my sniping's a little rusty i gotta admit but uh, i was <laughs> slowly starting to improve my sniping um, but it's just one of those things that i will improve over time because i haven't really played a first person shooter in about two months now uh, because i've been knee deep in dragon age but you know throwing that aside i do want to talk about one of the other new features that they added it's very minuscule but it fits perfectly with sniping so whenever you're aiming down sights in midair you'll actually pause for a brief one two seconds uh, using your jump jets in order to maintain your position this is something that I used occasionally I feel like it's a very situational ability or something you know I'll have to get used to before I'm using it continuously but it's something that I thought was really cool so I was actually able to pause in midair and pop off a couple sniper shots which was really neat uh, again this is just one of those small features that they did add it's there if you need it although I do feel it's very situational it only comes in handy in certain situations it doesn't make you feel overpowered or anything along those lines because realistically the traditional halo method of running around and moving on the ground does maintain the uh, top priority I mean you know in all of my time together with the Guardians beta which I want to say was around 10 hours I only remember remember that is losing about four games and all four of the games that I did lose and remember losing were because we did not control power weapons uh, power weapons are extremely important in this game and that's something I really appreciate you've got to control the DMR you've got to control the battle rifle and more importantly you have to control in this case the sword and then also the uh, sniper rifle if you don't control these weapons or have a competent player on your 
your team that knows how to handle them to a certain degree, you're going to lose. And the one thing I liked seeing is when we lost, we lost horribly because a lot of people were constantly moving around and rushing with assault rifles, not playing as a team. The way I like to always explain it is playing like they were playing Call of Duty. A single player cannot take out an entire team on Halo without support, or at least without having some of his teammates serve as a distraction because that whole team of four players, in, the, in Slayer in this case, will be able to mow you down before you can even finish off one of them due to the way Halo's balanced thanks to the shielding. So it's something that I really appreciated about the game and it's something that I appreciated seeing in here because unlike Halo 4, I felt it was more traditional in its essence. I mean, one thing that I've noticed from going on going from Halo 4, right, which is the Halo that I played a lot of last year due to my job at Arena Gaming, down to doing the Halo that uh, you know is in the Master Chief collection that I enjoy playing, which is Halo 2 anniversary, of course. This feels like a good balance between the two. It doesn't feel like it's drastically Halo 4. It doesn't feel like it's drastically old school Halo. And it's something that I really appreciated. So, all in all, I'm really excited about this. I appreciate the competitive aspect they also have in the beginning and end of the game where it shows your team and they're all fist bumping and getting hyped up and things along those lines because it does feel like a competitive arena. And I like that they fully embrace that. I think that was one of the coolest things that I saw when I did the competitive Halo job. Everyone was great with each other. They were all pretty nice with each other. Of course, there's drama. You know, it's like any field in the world. But one thing I really respected about the Halo players is they were they respected each other. They respected each other as players. They respected how the other people played. And that was something that I really appreciated. I mean, one of the teams I followed closely at the time was Rain Ambush, uh, which had my buddy Pistola and uh, another, I wouldn't call him my buddy, but an acquaintance, so to speak, formal, you know. And I really enjoyed sitting down and talking talking with these guys, talking with people like T-Squared, talking with people like Nated. I mean, Nated, you know, is one of the most respected Halo players right now on Twitch, and he's, you know, playing a lot of Halo Master Chief Collection, prepping for Halo 5, things along those lines. And it's really cool because these players are phenomenal. They've been around for years. They've been playing Halo for the entire time span of Halo, uh, for the most part, that is. And that's something that I really appreciate. T-Squared, again... I'm excited to see how he plays in this game. I mean, I'm really excited to see how a lot of professional Halo players play this game. And if I have a chance at getting another Halo broadcasting job with uh, Halo 5 Guardians, I'm totally going to take it because it's such a cool environment and Guardians is a new, fresh game that really plays well in that type of environment. So... Anyway, guys, I won't keep you any longer. I know this was a bit longer of a video, but I did want to share my full impressions of the Halo 5 Guardians beta. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. I do know Halo better than Call of Duty at this point in my life just because of previous job engagements and the kind of communities that I've kept up with. So I will do my best to answer any questions you guys have. I also have plenty of footage. These are only two clips from my library of about six hours of footage. So if you guys would like to see any more Halo 5 Guardians videos, or another commentary whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to make that happen. Anyway guys, my name is Nick, otherwise known here as The Valence. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel for gaming commentary whenever I have time to release it, which is usually on a weekly basis. Thanks for watching guys, and have a good one, and I will talk to you guys in the Halo 5 Guardians beta coming on December 29th.